Welcome into our NFL recap show, Mason Viner and Jack Rothenberg. No football Tuesday slash Wednesday this week because um, we're just not sure if there's going to be a game, not much to talk about, and really not much new intel on the Terps since they're not practicing this week. So we're here giving you uh, the NFL recap. Jack, what were your thoughts? What games stuck out to you quickly before we really get into it in depth? Yeah, firstly, just starting off with that Washington football team game. Classic Washington uh, football team game. You, uh, you come back from 21 points down. You tie it up at 27, 16 seconds left. Everyone's thinking, okay, we're going to overtime. Nope. Let, uh, Chase Young has that costly rough in the passer, and they, uh, they cough up the game and let, let up that 59-yard field goal. Yeah, and, and I think you put it best there, 59-yard field goal in a game of really missed opportunities for a team that I guess is known for missed opportunities at this point. Uh, early on, starting off, they get sacked at a field goal range. They miss a kick. I'm not exactly sure what, you know, the special team situation for Washington was in question prior this week. They don't take a 55-yarder inside. That's something else that I think we need to get to is – if you don't have a kicker that can kick 55 yards inside, what are you really doing with that kicker anymore? And we've seen that a few times around the league this last week, but you said it, number two draft pick, a guy that everyone's super high on, uh, he gets a penalty in in proper fashion for the team that he's playing for, and then a 59-yard kick from Prater, a guy who's been a little bit inconsistent this year, uh, wins the game and, and leaves Washington at 2-7, and seven, uh, now at the bottom of the worst division in football. Yeah, and another game that stuck out to me was that Ravens-Patriots game. I, I don't know anybody who thought the Patriots stood a chance in that game, but they came out, they played well. The Ravens, it, it, they looked bad all, all night long. Skura, their center, couldn't snap the ball. They had that one play with Mark Ingram on that fourth and one. I, I don't know why they chose that play call, but obviously it didn't work out. And Lamar Jackson this year just has not looked like the, the MVP we saw last year. And they, they need to rethink what they're doing over there because it's them sitting at six and three, tied with the Browns for uh, second in the division. Uh, yeah, they need to figure something out quick. Yeah, pivotal game for uh, Baltimore this week. And, and New England, they did what New England does. You know, they played consistently throughout a game in bad weather. And I think, and I was talking to Bruce about this on Lights, Camera, Ravens in a pregame. It is New England. They, they will put up a fight. Yes, they've been bad at times this year, but if you look at the scores, I mean, that game in Denver, bad weather, they lose, they fall apart after the virus hits them, they blow it in Buffalo. They're not going to blow many games. It's, it's still a Belichick coach team, and, and they will find a way through. J.C. Jackson for New England, a, a Terp. He now leads the league in interceptions. He had what I believe he broke, he did break the New England franchise record for most consecutive games with an interception. Uh, he finds a way to get one, and it just seems as time goes on and this team relies more on Lamar Jackson's arm, you start to see the flaws that everybody pointed out prior to his NFL career. It's been a great, you know, two and a quarter years for him in this league, but with the injuries to the offensive line, the inability to run the ball up the middle, and you just see the same issue with his throwing, which is he can't really hit the outside of the field. They don't have a big play wide receiver, even though Hollywood's great. He is 5'8". He's a guy that you can get really physical on. He's having trouble getting open, and for Baltimore, you're starting to kind of staring down the barrel here. You got a game against Jacksonville, a few other winnable ones in there, but you're gonna have to get to ten wins probably to make the playoffs. You may, you know, have those pivotal games against Pittsburgh on Thanksgiving night. The next game they have up against the Browns. There's a handful of them in what's left of the schedule that if you're pulling for the Ravens to make it in the playoffs, you gotta have them. Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the DC Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Yeah, and talking about the Patriots and their playoff push, now they're sitting at four and five. And we were talking before the show. They have a couple winnable games down the stretch, but realistically, they would need to win out to, to try and make the playoffs. They, they would be sitting at 11 and five if they were to win out with six, six and three teams in the AFC. It just, it doesn't really seem in the realm of possibilities for them 
to make a playoff push uh, towards the end of the season. Right, and if you look at that for them, you kind of already are going back saying that game against San Francisco, the one against Denver, they had to get one of those two. Uh, looking ahead, the Texans. I mean, the Texans have been up and down recently, a 10-7 loss to the Browns in a terrible weather game uh, in Cleveland that had a lightning delay and then heavy winds throughout the game that really stopped both teams from being able to put up a lot of points. Uh, that's who New England has next on the road. Then they play at home against Arizona, two games on the road against the L.A. teams, even though that it was – if you're wondering about the scheduling there, that's the classic NFL where you travel, you stay out there the entire week, practice somewhere else, and then play that game that's not allowed this year. They'll have to return back to New England, two road games against the L.A. teams, and then – Possibly a pivotal matchup against the Dolphins. Now, Miami, a team 6-3 and three now, after their win over the L.A. Chargers, uh, really starting to look solid with Tua in there. But for Cam Newton, for this New England team, if their defense keeps playing great, they'll give, them, they'll give themselves a chance to make the playoffs. But you're right, Jack, too many tough games. I don't see it happening. And, you know, they're, they're on a roller coaster ride this year. Up one week, down the next week. If you keep playing inconsistent football in the AFC, uh, you're not going to make the playoffs. Yeah, and transitioning now to the NFC, the NFC West, it's been a crazy division the entire year. You've got you got the Rams at six and three, the Seahawks at six and three, and now the Cardinals at six and three after they put off that crazy Hail Mary with uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, what what are your thoughts on their division and who do you think is gonna win? Yeah, first off, my thoughts on that game. A fantastic touchdown by another turf. I like to mention them throughout the show, Stefan Diggs. I really thought at that point Buffalo had it. Uh, but Arizona strikes back. Fantastic play by Kyler Murray down the stretch there. He is getting better. I think you can see that now. That That's kind of my first comment, comment on Arizona. Last week uh, on the show, I said for Arizona to make it, they're, they're injured at this point. But it's a team that always gives themselves a chance to win because they can score a lot. They kind of remind me of the Maryland team. Uh, that the Terps had this year where they were, you know, running and shooting. And if you can score, you always give yourself a chance to win. That's the position that Arizona is in, in my eyes. Are they a playoff team? Maybe. And, and the reason why I say maybe is because this year that division is stacked. Seattle's much more consistent than them. Uh, the Rams, I think, are also more consistent than them. And just a spot where you're like, if you put them in the NFC East, if you put them anywhere else there, I think they're probably the best team in that division. But not not – in the NFC West, they're faced too many challenges. They're a little bit, still a little bit injured on the defensive side of the ball. And if I'm Arizona, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line in the draft, you got to kind of get one more, two more guys that are very consistent there. You have great receivers, a really good quarterback, a good stable of running backs. But if you're looking at it from the offensive side, you got to draft linemen. And on defense, I think they just need help all around. Yeah. Um, I would actually argue that the the Cardinals are kind of set up better than the Seahawks to make the playoffs because the Seahawks, that defense, they can't stop a nosebleed. They cannot stop anyone. And the way that they're going to win games down the stretch towards the end of the season is by outscoring people. They they rely on Russell Wilson game in and game out to just put up more points than the than the other team. And you saw that against the Rams. See, uh, Russell Wilson has just been tossing interceptions left and right. He he has been able to hold on to the ball. Uh, the past couple of games, he's had multiple turnovers. And in these type of division games, anyone can win. You've seen that. And I think Arizona is kind of set up better than Seattle. And with the Rams, I think they just continue to get better. You, you saw that they won against the, the Seahawks this, this past week. And you can never count out, count out Sean McVay. Obviously, he's been a great coach for the past couple of years. And Jared Goff, he's been playing better. So I, I think that the Cardinals are actually going to uh, come out on top in this NFC West. So this is why I like Seattle. After tomorrow night's or probably tonight's game when you're watching this against Arizona, they take on the Eagles, the Giants, the Jets, and Washington in a row. I think that's four wins for Seattle right there. Now, the way they're playing right now, you can maybe see them blowing one of those games, whether it be Washington uh, the Giants or the Eagles, those three teams desperate for wins, trying to, you know, propel themselves to the top of that division. I'm not sure uh, in the next three weeks you're probably going to see the Giants and the Eagles with a chance. Washington, uh, which is about five weeks out, may or may not be eliminated from it at that point. We'll see where how that plays out with their games against the Bengals and then Dallas on Thanksgiving. But 
I, I really see Seattle winning all those games. I mean, maybe, again, maybe the Giants, the Eagles, or Washington pulls one off, but th- that is why I like Seattle. For the Cardinals, I think it's a tougher road uh, for Arizona. Again, you just said they sit at 6-3 and three now. They have Seattle on Thursday night. Uh, then they're at New England, home against the Rams, at the Giants, at home against the Eagles, and at the 49ers. That three-game stretch, Giants, Eagles, 49ers, are going to have to hope it's three wins for Arizona. They finish it out at the Rams. Um, so both of these teams have that little stretch for Seattle. It's where you can win four straight for Arizona. It's where you can come up with three straight, but again, I'm not counting San Francisco out as an easy game for any of these teams. Yeah. And just going back to the Cardinals real quickly, I just, the reason why I'm so high on them is that they've shown that they can beat good teams. Even though the Seahawks, like I said, they don't have a great defense. They outscored them. They won 37, 34 in that crazy overtime game. And then they've also, They've also come back and beat the Bills like we saw this week. So they've shown that they can beat good teams. And this Seattle team with that defense, I just – I can't go with them right now. Yeah. Moving on, one, one game that I did want to mention that I know we didn't talk about in the pre-show was Monday night's game, uh, the Vikings beating Chicago. And that kind of, at least in my mind, uh, really puts Chicago in a bad spot of making the playoffs 5-5 five and five now. And they, they seem to be getting worse with time, not better. Yeah, I, even when they were 5-1, I, I didn't really see them as a contender in the NFC just because their quarterback situation with Nick Foles, now he's hurt. But with Mitch Trubisky, they, they're both not great. And the Vikings, even though they came back and won, I just neither of them are really contenders. And the Packers are running away with this division. And I think it's similar. You see the Vikings sitting at 4-5. and five. I think it's similar with them as it is to the Patriots. They're going to need to win some tough games. Uh, late in the season in order to try and get in. But I just this, the Packers are going to win the division, and I, I don't see either team really making a push. Yeah, and if they were to make a push, they're on the bye this week. Uh, then they go at Green Bay, so it doesn't get very easy for them quickly. Uh, at home against the Lions team that I think, you know, they're kind of an any, they're in any given Sunday team. They can score the ball. Uh, they have solid, again, what you just said. Chicago doesn't have a quarterback and they have a defense. Detroit has a quarterback, and they don't have a defense. So it's kind of like a mix of different things. They then play Houston at the Vikings at the Jags. So a chance to maybe get a few more wins for the Bears, but uh, I'm not really seeing them pushing five more wins to get to that 10-win mark. Uh, Another kind of eight-and-eight year for them. Uh, Not really – I don't – in my own mind, I can't see you firing Matt Nagy right now. They're 25 and 16 in his time. Not many NFL coaches that are nine games over 500 uh, get get the boot, but he, he may find a way to get fired here. And and I think he's a guy that deserves another chance if he is to get fired at a, at a head coaching job just because he's been able to win a lot of football games. Yeah, and going back to the Packers really quickly, one game that's going to be really exciting to watch this weekend, Colts versus the Packers. Packers obviously have that great offense with Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, all those targets against this great Colts defense. I think it's going to be a great battle on that side of the ball. And it's just going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, and I, I'm excited to see the Colts. You know, they've been in and out this year. Uh, that game against Baltimore is one that they got to kick themselves over only scoring 10 points. It, at the same time, I'm not really sold on Green Bay yet. You know, they, they found a way to beat Jacksonville, and, and that's not a thing that a lot of teams have had to say this year, finding a way to beat Jacksonville. But they did have to pull it out there at the end at home. They lost that game to the Vikings at Lambeau. I'm just not too sure. Aaron Rodgers, great quarterback, but there just seems to be something off ever since LaFleur took over. And, and it started showing at the end of the McCarthy era, too. Uh, but they just have not turn the wheels sometimes and that always concerns me about some of these teams yeah they're they're kind of like the bucks in in a, in some ways they they come out and they play great against te- certain teams and then they'll come out like they played against the bucks for example when they they got absolutely pummeled but it i think you just got to rely on aaron Rodgers. i i personally trust them i think they'll make the playoffs they'll make a little bit of a run but it, it's aaron Rodgers, and you gotta you gotta trust that he he knows what he's doing over there Right, and one of the last teams that I wanted to get to was Vegas, a team that I thought would have all the hype uh, if they were at the 6-3 and mark, which they are at now. Uh, They have a big game this upcoming weekend. They're playing Kansas City at home. That's your Sunday night football this week. Kansas City, a touchdown favorite uh, at Vegas. Vegas, a team 
what's your kind of thoughts? I, they're they're really quiet for being six and three. Yeah, they've they've had a couple great wins. They last time they played the Chiefs, they won. Uh, I think that they're one of those teams sitting at six and three that could definitely make the playoffs. It's just a matter of fact, their schedule and uh, are they able to play the way they did against the Chiefs, beat great teams down down the stretch of the season. And, I mean, we'll see. I, I like Derek Carr. I think with Josh Jacobs in that running game, they can they can make something happen. Right, and I agree with you. I also like Derek Carr. Uh, kind of an unpopular opinion from both of us right there. I also think Jacobs is really good in the run game. Their schedule, I mean, win or lose against Kansas City, they have games at Atlanta, at the Jets. They play the Colts. Uh, they get one against the Chargers and the Broncos, so two division teams that aren't doing too well there. Chargers are always a team, though, that a lot of people kind of write out in the win column. I'm not sure so sold that they're not going to find a way to steal one of these games. They keep getting close. Uh, I, I think that Herbert and company will find a way one week to to pull an upset, and, and it could be against Vegas, could be against the Chiefs. Um, but they're a team that's been hunting. I'm kind of throwing the Broncos in, in the more of the – that's when they can consider a win. But the Falcons, the Jets – uh, maybe they win one against the Colts. You know, they're going to be competitive, I think, in every game left in their schedule. And they're going to find a way to kind of squeak in the playoffs. But it's between some teams that I don't think many people uh, thought you would be talking about at this point in the season. The Raiders, the Dolphins, the Bills is one of the top teams in the AFC. I mean, there's just this kind of flip season scenario that I think a lot of people said – without the fans and the Raiders and really the Raiders and the Dolphins on the AFC side and then I'm thinking that it's really only the Cardinals that are that are a big surprise on the NFC side yeah going back to the Dolphins I think the biggest surprise about the Dolphins obviously they switched to Tua kind of mid-season but it's been that defense that defense has helped out Tua in this transition he he hasn't really had to play incredibly well yeah he's he has played well the past couple of games but the defense has set him up perfectly, gotten turnovers, given him the ball in plus territory, and he he hasn't had to play hero ball. He's t- he's tossed for touchdowns, he's thrown for over 250 yards, but he hasn't really had to do as much as Ryan Fitzpatrick had to do early on in the season. I think it speaks to the difference between the two players. You know, Tua can really, and this is one thing that I think you see with both of the Tonga Bailoas is keeps the game under control. You know, he may be slinging the ball everywhere, but he doesn't really throw interceptions. He doesn't really fumble the football. You know, Fitzpatrick's errors came somewhat forced. You know, he threw some interceptions at some really inopportune times. He had some turnover issues from Tua. You're not seeing that. And, yes, you're right. They're playing through the defense. They're keeping the game under control. They're giving themselves a chance to win, and they're finding a way to do that. And that, when your team isn't talent-wise better than pretty much anybody that you're playing – that's a good way to win a lot of games is keep the game under control, not turn the football over. And, you know, you have a defensive minded coach that was really good in new England. That's kind of continued on that culture. A lot of no names making big plays. A lot of guys that are really just seemingly doing their job to use new England's phrase and, and they're getting it done. No special teams errors, not a lot of turnovers, not a lot of big plays given up teams like that will always be, you know, that nine and seven to 10 to 11 and five mark playoff team and are they going to win the Super Bowl no but could they win the game in the playoffs I think so yeah I definitely agree and kind of transitioning onto another team with a New England branched coach is Joe Judge and these Giants what do you what do you think that they can do they just came off of a game beating the Eagles 27-17 you think that they can come out on top in this crazy NFC East I do think they can come out on top and I, I actually personally I do not like the Giants and and I don't think Jack does either not but I do, like, I do like these Giants from a football standpoint. They've gotten better as the season's gone on. Uh, they took a quarterback in Daniel Jones that at one point was really struggling and kind of sat him down, I think, and said, what can you do well that not a lot of people know about? And I think he responded, I can run the ball. And that is not one of Daniel Jones' strengths coming out of Duke. That wasn't what a lot of people looked at. But it has added another aspect. It's Jason Garrett is finally, I don't know how many years he's been in coaching, but he's finally found a way to have his quarterback adjust positively into a system. And that's what they've done with Daniel Jones. They're getting him out of the pocket. He's running the ball. And, and that just opens more things up for you. The guy that I really like on the Giants team is Wayne Goldman. 
Uh, they kind of counted him out. They got they went out. They got Saquon Barkley. Goldman seemed to be gone out of the picture. But this guy, I think he's a good, solid running back in this league. And they've just gotten, as I said, better as the season's gone on. And they positioned themselves at this point. Now, Philadelphia is still in first, but they positioned themselves to have that push to win the division. But I still think Washington could do it. They play the Bengals. They play the Cowboys in the next two games. If they can get two wins, uh, you could be looking after Thanksgiving or going into that weekend with Washington in first place at four and seven. The Giants could do it. The Eagles could do it. But as New York, given themselves in the last two weeks with two big division wins a chance to win, yes, they have. Yeah, and like, like you said, I think the Cowboys, you just can't put them in this conversation right now with their quarterback troubles and that, that god-awful defense. But like, like you said, the Washington football team, they can, I wouldn't say easily, but they, they're right in the thick of things. They can definitely win some games and kind of put themselves in position to win this division. But in my mind, I think the Eagles, even though they're still winning the division and it's kind of the easy pick at this point, I'm going to still go with them to win, win the division strictly because of Carson Wentz. I think He's the best quarterback in this division right now. He can kind of single-handedly will his team to, to a win. And I think with the receivers that they have, he's kind of making the most of the situation. And even though the Giants just beat the Eagles, I think moving down the road, the Eagles just have more experience than the Giants. Daniel Jones hasn't really been in must-win situations. And I think uh, the Eagles will take advantage of that. If I'm Philadelphia, the thing that I kind of change about my offense, and, and this may be – I wouldn't say controversial, but it really does risk a guy like Wentz, who's had some injury problems. I kind of pull somewhat of the Tim Tebow playbook out. You have a similar body quarterback, not the fastest runner, but definitely a guy that's run the football a lot in his time. I think it might drastically help you to pull out a play like quarterback power. You know, one of those plays that's used in college to free things up when you have a big, tough quarterback, which Wentz is – I start using those kinds of plays. You know, if you really think it's now, now's your time, you can win this division, and you're committed to that. And, and you're not committed to Wentz for, you know, the next 10 years, which I don't think they are anymore. Win the game. You know, yes, this guy is most likely, well, I'm not going to say most likely, but he is likely to get an injury. But bring him back. You know, so much of what he did, they've taken out of the playbooks and concerned that he's going to get hurt, and it's made him a bad football player. The guy loves to play the game. He does play scared, but run him a little bit. You know, you, you already invested in him. You're already there. You might as well take it and try and win. And if I'm Washington, I say the same thing. If I'm the Giants, I think the Giants have already committed to winning while they have an opportunity to win because they don't know when it's going to come around to them again. Yeah, uh, you can say the same thing about Washington putting Smith in. They could have gone to Haskins and just said, uh, let's see what this guy's got. We just spent the 15th pick of the draft, but instead they went to Alex Smith and they felt like they could win with, and I, I still think they can win with him. Yeah, for sure. And just kind of thinking out loud here with, with this football team, I think what, what a story would be if Alex Smith comes back from all those injuries, Ron Rivera uh, kind of battling cancer throughout the year. What a story would be if them two led this team to the playoffs. I just, I think it would be great. And it's one that you kind of hope for. And then, they find ways to lose. They found a way to lose against New York. Uh, they found a way to lose against Detroit. And and what a different situation it would be kind of quickly because it's all scenarios if Washington was sitting at four and five right now instead of two and seven. You know, they would be easily the team to pick to win this division. A lot of people thought that was what was going to happen over these past two weeks. But, you know, you get some results going your way. And if you're any team in that NFC East, I win the next two, I'm, I'm going to be the division, you know, leader. And if you're Philadelphia, you're like, I win the next two, I'm going to be the division winner. Not not only the leader, but I think you would, at that point, say that you could be the winner. A lot going around, you know, a lot of competition in this league right now, AFC East, NFC East, um, and, and things just starting to heat up. NFC West, you know, some really meaningful games as we get into that time of the year, past the halfway part point, most teams done over with their buys, so you don't have to really worry about that. And as you just kind of feel, you know, the playoffs creeping up, a lot of good competition around the league. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, like, like you said, for this uh, this football team, I think going down the stretch, you got to just – they found ways to lose games. You got to kind of flip it. And like you said, if you can win two games in a row, these, this game against the Bengals and then the game against the Cowboys on Thanksgiving Day, they can just find a way to – kind of flip the switch and win games instead of losing games in the fourth quarter. 
I think it go it could go a long way for them. Yeah, and I think that's the case not only for the football team, but for teams like the Ravens and the Browns who need to pick one up. You know, when you get into those close games at this time of the year, you really just got to lock in and find a way to pull one out. I think that there's a handful of teams in the same situation as these NFC East teams. Now, they might be 6-3 and three instead of 2-7, and seven, but there's a handful of teams around that, that are looking for that what game can I steal kind of mentality. I think the Browns, the Ravens, uh, the Colts, I think, are still one of those teams, even though they're pretty much comfortably – well, not really comfortably, but they're atop that division. There's just a handful of teams out there hunting for that. I'm going to get into a game, late game, and I need to make a play. And you really get to see who the playmakers are at that point. I think I think Washington's got a playmaker. Of course, the Ravens do have one. You know, but there are some teams that are still looking for that guy. The Giants, I still think the Eagles are looking for that guy. And as you kind of look around the league, I think that there's just a handful of teams that have those guys and, and ones that don't. And that's generally what it comes down to. We saw that last week with DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, for sure. Uh, to wrap it up here, what what are you what are your thoughts on the Washington football team game this weekend against the Bengals? What's your yeah. prediction? I think Washington finds a way to win uh, this week against the Bengals. The Bengals just got really beaten up by the Steelers, a game that we didn't talk about, thirty six to ten. And then around the league, kind of looking at the rest of the games, I think uh, I'm going to take the Raiders over the Chiefs. I think that that's my big pick on that Sunday night game. And then as you kind of look around. Who do you think hops, you know, gets that win that a lot of people aren't looking for? Is it Washington or is it really like, is it Washington or is it the Giants? You know, who's going to find a way to steal a game here? Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't really call this one a sleeper just because Drew Brees is out. But watch out for the Falcons against the Saints. I think with Jameis Winston starting a quarterback, you don't really know how he's going to play. He hasn't started a game since his time with the Bucs. But I think the Falcons could definitely pull off a pull off a win here in this weekend. And then one more that I have to ask you about, and it is kind of like the bottom feeder game of the week, the Jets and the Chargers. Do you think the Jets find a way uh, to get one against an L.A. team that's starting to kind of trend down after competing in a lot of games? Yeah, the way the Chargers have played, especially in the fourth quarter this year, you can't really count out the upset. I don't think the Jets are going to win. I think Justin Herbert is just going to make too many plays for them to stay in the game. But it's definitely one to watch out for. If uh, if the Jets are going to win a game, this could be one of them. Yeah, and they've, they've found a way to compete recently. I think that is a wrap-up. Anything else you want to add, Jack? No, I'm excited for this weekend. Like I said, this Packers-Colts game is exciting. I'm obviously excited to watch the football team. And just around the league, there's a bunch of good games, so I'm excited. Yeah, I think there is. And definitely kind of getting into that time where I'm looking for that upset. We haven't really seen that big upset yet this year, but – uh, as we get closer to the playoffs, you know, there's always that one team that comes out and spoils it. A uh, team that I'm really excited to watch this weekend is Miami. They're going up against the Broncos. You know, not not the most exciting matchup, but I, I do really enjoy watching that Miami team. Uh, that one at 4.05. We'll be back here next week on our football recap show to discuss what happened uh, this last week in the NFL and, and who's kind of surging ahead and who may be trending downwards. I'm Mason Viner. That's Jack Rothenberg. Thanks for watching. We'll be back here on the NFL Sports Maven Recap Show next week.